Hi, I'm Alex from Wilkinson Cameras and today we're at Cheshire Falconry in Northwich for a very exciting video with Canon where we take a look at the brand new Canon EOS R7 and EOS R10 crop sensor mirrorless cameras. These are the latest additions to the Canon EOS R range and the first APS-C sensor cameras in the R series. They're small, lightweight and affordable entries into Canon's EOS R system but don't let the words crop sensor and affordable fool you, these are packed full of features. Features. In this video we're going to be talking about the EOS R7 which I've been putting through its paces today. The EOS R7 follows in the footsteps of the EOS 7D series and is perfect for wildlife and sports photographers with an impressive 15 frames per second but it's also the perfect hybrid camera as it has impressive video features including 4K 60p with no record limit, in-body stabilisation up to 8 stops and a first for Canon at this level, C-Log. If you want to find out more about the new EOS R10, which Olivia has had the pleasure of trying out, then watch our other video where we cover that in depth. Click the link in the top right or the description below to see that video now. Okay, we know someone with a BDI is going to spot that I'm not actually in Northwich. We're in a scenic woodland location near the office in Preston. The footage we filmed last week didn't go quite to plan and we've had to reshoot. Proof that we're humans, if nothing else. So, the R7 is the long-awaited replacement to the EOS 7D Mark II. Sorry DSLR fans, but it looks like you might have to consider the switch to mirrorless sooner than you might have hoped. The good news is, Canon have anticipated this and the initial pre-orders will be shipped to you with a free EF-RF lens adapter, so you can still use your existing glass. It's going to be available as a body only, priced at 1349 or with a brand new RFS 18-150mm kit lens at 1699 Yes, you heard that correctly. Along with the new crop sensor cameras, Canon have released two new RFS crop sensor lenses. This has allowed them to make smaller, lighter and more affordable lenses to go with the new models. The 18-150mm is a really versatile all-round travel zoom, which is impressively small and an ideal kit lens for the R7. The EOS 7D Mark II was released way back in 2014. The technology in the R7 and its compact size are certainly a testament to eight years of technological advances, and we don't think anyone's going to be disappointed. I'm going to hand you over to Dave Parry, Canon product specialist who's with us, to tell you all about the new features in the R7 in more detail. So first of all, let me take you through the new R7. So here it is. As you can see, the size and weight on it is a very small, lightweight camera, much smaller and lighter than things like the 7D that we've had before. Actually, this camera is smaller and lighter than the 90D that we have. Now, the great thing about it, even though it's so small and lightweight, the grip is actually still a substantial grip, so it does feel like a nice size. A great thing, again, on here it is it takes the LPE6 battery series, so the LPE6N and LPE6NH. It's also got dual card slots in as well, so you can see here you've got dual SD card slots. Now, one of the things that is a real change from other cameras that we have in our lineup is we've actually combined the joystick and the control wheel on the back of the R7 and you can see here that you can use the control wheel, you can select it, select your AF point but actually got the control wheel around it as well. So with your thumb you can very quickly and easily change the settings on the camera. Screen on the back here, as you'd expect, it's a fully articulating variable angle touch screen. The screen is actually the same type of screen that we have on the, um, the R6 that we also have in our range. A couple of other things I'd like to mention about the outside of the camera. Um, you'll notice on the bottom here that we have, this used to be, years ago, used to be the depth of field preview button, but now it's moved on to do a lot more, a lot more different functions and settings. But what we have done is we've put a little switch around it which allows you to switch the lens from autofocus to manual focus, which on this type of lens, on some of our um, RF lenses, you don't have that switch on there. So we've put it on the body to allow you to do that. Now, if we look at the top of the camera, what you will see is we've got the new advanced accessory shoe on the top. So don't worry, this is a standard size hot shoe um, and it will take um, any of your accessories. You can see you've got the X-Sync on the top there, but it's got the extra electrical contacts, which allows you to use more sophisticated accessories to have that two-way communication between your accessory and the camera. And the best thing I think for this is audio. We do a microphone that goes on the top, which will take the audio through the accessory shoe rather than plugging it in through a three and a half mil jack. 
If you do decide you want to do that, it does have that on the side. So if you are using a different type of microphone, we have the standard jack on here. Um, you also have headphone input as well. So this is not just a very powerful stills camera. This is also a very powerful video camera as well. And because it is the crop sensor, because it is an APS-C size sensor, it does give a similar look and feel to Super 35mm, which is great for people who shoot video. So let's talk about the internals on this camera. So first of all, let's talk about the sensor. So the sensor is actually very similar to what we have in our 90D and our M6 Mark II, and it's from a similar stable to that. Big differences are the micro lenses on the sensor has been redesigned for the mirrorless and also the circuitry behind to make it that high speed camera. We've coupled this with our latest Digic X processor. And the great thing about that is you'll see a, uh, an improvement in image quality in your JPEGs as well as raw shooting with this camera. Now, one thing that DigiX does give you is gives you an amazing autofocus system. And I think for anyone who's using this camera, stepping up from maybe a 7D or a 90D or something like that, the one of the things you will really notice is the autofocus system. So we have on here our dual pixel CMOS AF2 which is a very similar system to what you find on our flagship R3, the R5, and on the R6 as well. Now this AF system, the tracking is absolutely amazing. Um, you have face detection, body detection, eye detection on here. You have uh, bird detection, you have animal detection, you have um, ability to detect vehicles, whether they're single seater F1 cars or whether they're saloon cars. It can track these subjects incredibly fast. So the AF system is something that I think people would really would like to try on this camera. So let's talk a bit more about the video functionality on this camera. So it will shoot 4K, it does actually shoot in 7K, but will then give you a 4K file from that, and that is downsampled rather than line skipped. You can do 4K 30p, but you can also do 4K 60p, and that is full sensor area, so there's no crop on that as well. It will also do 120 frames a second. So you can shoot in C-Log3 on this one, which is the first time of ever of a camera of this type, and you can shoot HDR PQ. As I mentioned earlier, you've got the microphone and the headphone input, so this is a very powerful video shooting tool. So you may have noticed there's a new lens on the front here. We have an 18 to 150 millimeter. So this is an RFS lens. So it's now designed specifically for the crop sensor R cameras. You can actually put it on a full frame um, like an R5 or an R6, but if you do that, the camera will automatically go into its 1.6 crop mode. And as you can see, it's a very small and lightweight lens. Um, so for an 18 to 150 millimeter, that is very small and very, very lightweight. You can see it's got this larger flange on the back of it and obviously that's to cover the um, the, the size of the uh, mount on the camera now this will this camera will take even though it's an RFS lens it will take normal RF lenses it will also take EF and EFS lenses if you use the adapter so the R7 really is a part of the EOS family so the great thing about this lens if you do use it on an R7 you can get up to seven stops of image stabilization and that is at 150 millimeter as well as 18. So it's amazing to have that capability on this camera. Pretty impressive, no? I'm definitely not a wildlife photographer, but I've really enjoyed using the R7. It makes it so easy to track wildlife. The eye tracking on the birds was really easy to set up and it worked every single time. I've tried it with a selection of lenses, including the RF 100 to 500 millimeter L lens, what a lens, oh, just beautiful. Of course, on a crop sensor, this becomes 160 to 800 mil, which is just incredibly versatile for sports and wildlife photographers. Pair it with the affordable RF 100 to 400 mil, and you've got a compact and lightweight 160 to 640 mil lens, which you can take anywhere. But where this really impressed was when I used the RF 800 mil, which becomes a massive, 1280mm lens with full AF even though it's an f11 lens and remarkably impressive results for such an affordable telephoto prime. The in-body stabilisation on the R7 also made this really usable handheld. The 32.5 megapixel sensor also means that you can easily crop into your image even after the fact. The weight and the handling are just really ideal. It's a lot smaller than a 7D but it doesn't feel too small and it handles like a DSLR. Sometimes mirrorless cameras can trade off balance and handling for smaller more compact bodies. Canon have struck a really great harmony between the two with the R7. DSLR fans are going to love it, but so are existing mirrorless users. 
The EVF, or electronic viewfinder, is also impressive. I couldn't detect any lag or flicker. I didn't even notice I was using an EVF. Another win for existing DSLR users who might be nervous about making the switch. I love this camera. I'm reviewing it because poor Olivia didn't actually manage to prize it out of my hands for the entire duration of the day. It's definitely on my personal wish list. I don't need full frame. I prefer smaller and lighter cameras. I like cameras that make taking great photos really easy. I take more pleasure in the end result than I do in the process. And the R7 just ticks all of these boxes for me. Whether you're an existing 7D user or someone looking for a more affordable entry into the EOS R system without any real compromise on features, a wildlife or sports photographer, someone looking for compact and super capable hybrid stills and video camera, buy this you are not going to regret it. If, however, you want more of an all-rounder, slightly lower price point and can sacrifice some of the more advanced video features and in-body image stabilization, then take a look at Olivia's new R10 review video instead. So what do you think? Let us know in the comments, along with any other questions or feedback about the EOS R7. And of course, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so you can see all the latest videos. Thank you for watching.